So today is day one of my pre MBA preparation series on this channel. In this series, I'm going to learn complex MBA topics, make notes on them and share them with you every single day till I join my B school. And if you are on the same boat as me, join me in this journey, subscribe and let's prepare for MBA together. So today I was wondering what is the course that I should start with because there's a lot of different courses, a lot of different YouTube playlists in multiple domains. But after a bit of thought, I thought that statistics is probably an important place to start and probably something that I would be interested in as well. So let's start with statistics. And there are really two important and well-known courses in statistics that are recommended for MBA students before joining for the degree or the B school. And these are, I've written it down. These are first is analytics for business problem solving. And the second one is pre MBA statistics. And both of these courses are given to us by IIM Ahmedabad professors on their online portal. And both of them are free to watch. So I thought that let's start with one of these. And I finally decided let's start with analytics for business problem solving. And this is the course that I personally started with today. I completed the first two lectures. So if you are somebody who's starting your own preparation journey with me, complete the first two lectures today and you will be at pace with me. And uh, now that that is out of the way, let me let me explain what I have learned. Just take this as somebody, uh, a friend sharing what he has learned with you and also sharing his notes with you so we can work this out together and prepare together. OK, let's get started. This is what I've learned. The first thing that I saw was who are the professors that I'm learning from. So there are two professors specifically who have made this course. The first one is Arindam Banerjee and the second one is Tathagat Bandupadhyay. And uh, Right now, in the first two lectures, only Mr. Arindam has started teaching and he's a fantastic teacher. I have never seen somebody engage us so well, but uh, I just love the way he teaches. Anyways, the first topic he starts with is the role of analytics in business problem solving. And he goes on to start teaching us about what does an analytics professional really do or what is expected of him. And uh, he says that an analytics professional is expected to tell stories that match up with data. So essentially, a lot of times in institutions or in corporates, in businesses, what happens is if they are not so data oriented, then the person with the highest rank, that is the CEO or the boss, he or she has the say over the decisions and it doesn't really matter what anybody else says. That is the approach that generally happens if it's not so data oriented and that's not the right way to run business, right? So here comes analytics, that is people who understand data, people who collect data, analyze them and make stories out of them or make insights out of them. And it is always the data driven insights that win. And that is where the analytics professional comes in and hence analytics is key. The second thing which we have learned is uh, or I've learned is what are the capabilities required to add value through analytics. And this is something which I found very, very interesting because uh, whenever I learned a new topic till today in school or during my graduation years, nobody really spoke about how can I personally add value using uh, something that I have learned. And we were just learning concepts at that time. But today, uh, when I was going through this course, I really noticed that they are focusing on exactly how do we add value in the corporate scenario. And that that was fantastic. That was amazing for me to see. But anyways, how do we add value through analytics? There are three parts to this and it's a Venn diagram. You can see it on the screen. I'll just put it on the screen so you can see it. Information architecture and management. That is the first thing that we need to understand. What is that? It is about uh, we understanding how do we collect information and put it in a particular format that is understandable and really approachable or accessible. That is the first thing. Information architecture and management. The second one is processing or the analytical prowess. So now we have the information in a particular structured format where we can understand it. So what do we do with that information? We analyze it and get a story out of it or an insight out of it that is relevant. Now, the last part which I said that is relevant, it is relevant to the context and who decides the context and who brings the context in or what dimension are we talking about? It is about business acumen. So what happens is we have 
come out with an insight or a story from the data but that data or that insight that we've come out with has to be used in context of the business that we are looking at and the amalgamation of these three parts in the middle is specifically where the analytics professional lies and i thought that this was really really interesting but also he mentioned a particular thing that this graph has not been really looked at in this manner since many many uh, decades because the focus has mostly been in one of these sectors depending upon which context are we talking about for example if you're talking about the US market there, they have a lot of data. So they are really talking about data science and they're really talking about uh, how data can predict the final outcome. But in India, there's lack of data. We don't have a lot of data. So the primary focus is on business acumen. So it depends on the context where we are. But ideally, these are the three things that are important and the amalgamation of it is the analytics professional. Okay, now let's go to the next thing that we learned or I learned, which is analytics cycle in an organization. And this was a fantastic um, concept. Again, this is a cycle which I understood that businesses use to particularly solve business problems that they encounter. So it starts with business issues that they have to identify. It goes to collecting data related to that issue. It goes to reviewing that data, whether that data is clean, whether that data is in the correct format, etc. Then it goes to creating a model. Now here a model or an insight that we're talking about is basically uh, it's it's basically a system or it's basically a, basically a replica of the real world situation um, that we're trying to create so that even before we implement a particular solution, we can test it in a particular scenario so that um, after testing it, we can once we deploy it in the real world, it at least gives similar or at least maybe 10% less, but at least okay, okay results that we want. Okay, so that's model. The next thing is work session, I which I particularly did not understand yet. And that's okay, right? We are students. So we are still learning. We I didn't understand what's work session, but I understood what's presentation. So that that's we need to present the next thing is action plan, we create an action plan of how to solve that problem basis of the data that we have basis of the insight and the model that we have. And finally, we, we go into the activation section where we activate the idea. Now, this is the whole cycle that I've understood. It's okay that we have some gaps over here, which we might fill it later in the course. Now, let's go to the next thing that I learned, which is what really is a model. Now, as I already said, model is a replica of the real world situation or it's sort of a template that we create where we can implement or we can test out the idea of the solution and we can see whether it gives the right results. So that's a model uh, model. Also, um, the how do we implement a model? How do we really work with a model? It's in accordance with statistical tools as well. So we need particular tools to actually work around with a model. A tool is something like a function, for example, an algorithm. And that is a statistical tool that we use to create a function. For example, there are five variables that lead to our output to make it more relatable. What they explained was the five variables can be the color of a t-shirt, what's written on the t-shirt, the brand of the t-shirt, the size of the t-shirt, etc. So there are n number of variables. And by tweaking those variables, can we change the final outcome, which is bu buying of that particular t-shirt by the customer? Can we change that? Can we increase that by 10%, 20%? So that is basically what we're trying to do. Over here, there are three kinds of algorithms that we were taught in the first two lectures. The first one is separation algorithms and within that a subpart is predictive models. What does predictive models do? It's basically creating a y is equal to f of x function. And inside this f of x is the argument that we are making. That is, we are making the case that this is the particular function that basically can predict what outcome do we get when we input all these five variables. So this is the best function that we are able to create. No particular model or algorithm is 100% correct to the real world scenarios because in the real world, there are n number of factors and there are factors which we don't even know and that does affect the final outcome. So it's not a 100% real or 100% effective model, but then this is something that we try to create. That's one. And this we can only do if we have rich data. That is, if we can ha have good data, only then can we have good models out of it. That's one, separation algorithms, predictive modeling. The second one is separation algorithms, but exploratory modeling. And in this, it is about 
for example there's a population and in that population there's a there's different kind of race cultures etc that exist okay and in that we want to create particularly a division line maybe uh, where if you divide certain people in certain categories how do we do that we can do that through similarities in people and we can do that through uh, creating basically functions for each kind of similarity or dividing them through a line and that's called exploratory we are exploring through the demographic and we are looking at where can we really draw the line and separate it into clusters so that is exploratory algorithms for you the third thing is normative algorithms and here it is about how can we control these five variables and get the desired output i'll be honest with you for me predictive algorithms and normative algorithms i didn't see a lot of difference inside that till now if you are already data science and analytics professional you will tell me that okay there there's a lot of difference come on shobik why don't you understand but i am a student and if you are a student as well you will understand that okay both of the places it's y equal to f of x f of x is the argument in both of the cases and um, we are trying to predict what's the solution in both of the cases so what's the difference that is the exact question in my mind maybe i clear it out in the next few days when i'm reading about this but for now this is my understanding that normative algorithms is for trying to uh, basically tuning the final function at the lowest cost and getting the desired outcome that is why and the final thing that they discussed was about the indian markets which we already spoke about that is indian markets have very less amount of data till now and hence making predictive algorithms making these kind of statistical tools is still very difficult the focus hence is again more on collecting the right data and then reviewing it and getting it into a certain configuration where we can actually use it for real world scenarios in india which is very very difficult but in the us markets where the market is more mature there the number of variables that really affect the final outcome of buying or sales is less so that is much much more easier so that is all that i have learned today in these first two lectures i am going to commence uh, this course again i am going to start with this course in the, from the third lecture onwards probably maybe today in the night or tomorrow morning let's see but i'll make a video again on the next lectures that i go through but uh, for now if you are with me in these two lectures and you are with me and you are at pace with me that's great uh, if you still not started with this course and are doing this completely with me go ahead and just enroll in this course it's free uh, it's business problems and analytics for business problem solving by am amdabad i'll put the link of the course in the description as well for your benefit I think that's all for the video. Let's meet tomorrow. Namaskar. See you.